The 11th R Racing Team's second yacht, Olakai, was dismasted off the coast of Spain, on Wednesday, November 10. The team were four days into the Transat Jacques Vab, the 5,800 nautical mile race from La Havre, France to Martinique, in the Caribbean. Simon Fisher describes what happened. Wednesday evening, and uh, unfortunately, I have to report that uh, this afternoon we lost our mast on board 11th hour racing, Alakai. We were sailing downwind um, in about 20 knots of wind. Just uh, coming to the coast uh, near Acarunya, and uh, yeah, we we're maybe uh, 20 minutes away from a jibe and going off the shore, so we were just putting a reef in. Been a little bit conservative, and uh, yeah, we just got that all sorted out, and then uh, got going again. And unfortunately, did a big nose dive. Uh, heard a loud banging noise, and uh, I think yeah, it was fairly obvious from where we sat inside to, as to what had happened. Um, yeah, we went up on deck and assessed it, set the situation. The uh, the mast had um, gone down over the front of the boat, and then uh, and then as a result of that the boat drifted over the top of the rig so we had a uh, yeah a long battle to try and uh, see if we were going to be able to uh, get the rig back on board that was obviously our, our first goal our first aim we were hoping we were going to be able to get it on board and uh, save as much as the, the mast and sails and rigging as we could um, with it being washed under the boat though it was uh, impossible to pull out so we worked hard for a while on trying to um, just trying to get it get the boat to turn around, get the rig streaming out so then maybe we could put it on board more easily. But um, as we started to work on that and got the boat pointing up wind and the rig out from underneath the boat, uh, it, it actually started sinking quite quickly. So uh, yeah, we were unable to do, to get it back on board. It was gonna be too much for the two of us to put on board. So, uh, and, and we're also at that stage starting to risk further damage to the hull and, uh, and the foil. So uh, at this stage we had to make the difficult decision to uh, to cut everything away, but we, uh, yeah, we saved everything we could. We've hopefully minimised the damage to the boat, and uh, now we're motoring towards Acarinha, where we'll be uh, received by our uh, good friend Tuni, who's going to help us tie up. So uh, we'll give you a little update as and when uh, we're all squared away. Obviously, very disappointed. Um, yeah, we're looking forward to a good race. Had some good speed. Just put in a couple of good steads, sked. So uh, yeah, we're feeling really. Uh, Excited and optimistic about what was to come. Uh, the the routine was looking like it was, uh, yeah, it was going to be a, a good race for us to, to, to fight back and uh, and really start to work on the leaders in the long term. So, uh, yeah, bitterly disappointed for uh, for ourselves and then and for the team and obviously everyone following us. But uh, yeah, sorry, uh, sorry, it came to this end, and uh, we'll update you when we have more information. The World on Water spoke to Justine and Simon before the start of the race. Hey guys, so here we are on board that marvelous uh, Imoka boat and uh, we're gonna start our tour with a general presentation of the deck. Uh, Justine, would you like to start uh, to uh, explain to the Aussie audience uh, what is an Imoka boat and what are the specificities of this one? Yes, yeah, so welcome uh, on board the uh, 11 Sour Racing uh, 1. So um, um, this boat is an Amoka, it's the ex uh, Hugo Boss from the Vendée Globe in 2016. Um, so a pretty good boat and uh, the big modification which has been done to the boat is to change the foils. So we have a new pair of foils from, from this year. They look pretty massive from here. <laughs> Yeah, they're quite massive. They just uh, respect the rule uh, yeah. of this year, of the new Imoka rule on the size of the foils. And uh, yeah, if you want, we can have a, a look at the, the deck. Okay, just uh, one last question about uh, what's happening uh, uh, outside the boat. How would you define the uh, purpose of uh, uh, the foil? How does it work on a boat? Um. <laughs> so yeah, the foils um, do two main things, I guess, really. One is to uh, create stability, so writing moment. <clears throat> so the faster we go, actually, the more writing moment we can generate, which means we can get a lot more power out of the boat. And then the other thing is, obviously, to reduce the displacement. So you, know, you, you see these fantastic images of us flying, and actually, yeah, what we try to do is, is fly as high as we can, but stably as well. So uh, 
yeah, when we're just out of the water going fast, it's uh, yeah, we can generate a lot of power, a lot of riding moment, but also very, very low drag, which helps us to do some, some really good speeds in actually uh, not that much wind. We can sound a lot faster than the wind speed when we, when we get those sporting conditions. I'm sure it's making the life inside interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One thing it doesn't do is make the boat any more comfortable to sail. And uh, yeah, it's interesting. Actually, you, know, you, you sail with a lot less heel with all the writing moments before you sail very upright. Um, so there's not much heel, which is maybe nice in one way. But the downside is actually you do a lot of slamming with a harlem when you're jumping in and out of the water all the time. Yeah, it can be uh, it can be hard to sleep when uh, when you're sailing double-handed and the other person is on deck sailing fast. Uh, yeah, sometimes getting rest is a bit of a challenge, but uh, you know we're here to race, so it's all part of the game. So let's go inside and uh, watch uh, and try to see how how com comfortable it can be. Let's do that. Sure, let's go in. <laughs> So here we are, pretty well protected from the rain here in Le Havre. So yep. how would you describe that space in the boat? What's yeah. happening here? What's that? Well, this is where most of the magic happens. And uh, as you can see from a, a, a normal, typical offshore racing boat, the, the big difference is we're, we're completely covered up. And as these boats have evolved, they've become more and more protected. Um, actually, the rule drives the, the cockpits to be very low in the boat. We've, we've worked really hard to lower the CG. But that also means that uh, if we were not covered up, we'd be getting very wet and, you know, we'd get hit and by the water down the deck. So uh, with the speed and the foils and, and the amount of water we get over the deck, everything's evolved to be very covered up. But that means we can actually sail hard and, uh, and, and in relative comfort, I guess, and, and not so wet. There's the massive amount of ropes <coughs> coming from the front of the boat, so it's also coming there and it goes on that uh, winch here. Yeah, so on this boat we have a central uh, field, so for sure all the whole yards, all, uh, a lot of uh, stuff for the trim come back here. And um, we have also two, two winches on uh, each other side for, for the different sheets of the sails. So yeah, it looks complicated like this, but uh, after a few days you get used to it. And is there some room inside, or uh, is it, uh, is it, is it <laughs> no, a no. wide open space, or <laughs> is it pretty um, narrow? No, yeah, you, you can come in, and obviously this, this cockpit's a nice, uh, obviously it's designed as a single-handed boat, but yep. it also works well for crew racing, it's a good balance. Um, actually having the winches kind of spread out a bit means uh, a couple of people can work, and then, you know, you can sit here, control the sails and all the, all the pilot functions, which is uh, obviously very important. Okay. Can we get inside yeah, shortly? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Here we yeah, are. As we come down here, you see it, it's not massive, but uh, yeah, when we race fully crewed with five people, it's uh, it's a bit of a squash down here. But uh, <laughs> when there's only two of us and uh, one person's on deck, you've got all this space to yourself. But uh, I guess uh, show you around a bit. I mean, right here we have the nav station. Um, no comfy chair or big space to sit in. We actually put this right to where you're sitting now and, and, and sit in the pit so we don't have to leave the cockpit to do any of the navigation work. Um, and then as you look around, all of this is ballast tanks so we can get uh, almost a ton of water in the boat for extra stability. And sometimes we need it and sometimes when we're sailing fast with the foil we can, we can drop it and that's another sort of element of performance we work at. Um, our bunk's just out here for when we do get the, the chance to sleep. <laughs> and then under these covers here we have all the electronics, the motor, uh, the water maker and some of the other engineering systems on board. But it's all like covered up and, and, and tightly packed to be around the centre of gravity of the boat. So it's, uh, yeah, everything and around performance. <laughs> okay. And the sails are mostly at the front when they are not on deck for the balance and all that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. If you, we can, you can probably peer through into the into the dark front bit of the boat, and you can see that's our, our stacking area. And in, uh, in a lot of conditions, our sails are in the front. And then, uh, as it gets uh, windier and wavier and more downwind, then we have to drag them all the way uh, to the back of the boat. <laughs> okay. So the Transat Jacques Vabre is a race uh, that you're 
racing two people on board. How do you get organized uh, to uh, sell the, the faster you can being uh, two persons on board? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. I think uh, I've, I've not done much single-handed sailing, or if any, but I've uh, done a lot of crew racing, so this, this double-handed thing is very yeah. new for me. And I think it's kind of, for me, I, I feel like you get a lot of the thrill of sailing single-handed because you're on deck, on loan, managing the boat, but it's also great to have someone to sail with, to work with, be part of a team, and uh, and yet, yeah, no, you know, you've got backup, you've got someone to share the experience with, and you also get the opportunity to rest because... When you go down, you know someone else is sailing in the boat. But um, yeah, on board, we try and you know rotate. Uh, on the shorter races, you generally only, you, we sort of, sort of swap every hour. But I think in this longer race, when hopefully we can get a bit more of a rhythm, we'll do a few more hours, which allows each of us to, to stay rested. But um, yeah, we, we, we work hard on, on trying to keep each other fresh and just changing as, as we need to. And, uh, and then obviously for all the maneuvers and everything, we're, we're always both on deck. And do you have any specific roles? I mean, uh, is there someone that has a particular role compared to another and uh, a few uh, specific <laughs> skills that uh, you're not sharing? Uh, no, I mean, we, we obviously can, everybody, uh, well, for the both of us, can, can yeah. do everything. I guess uh, because we came from doing our, our sailing on this boat originally as crewed, we sort of, I guess, fill out our, our initial roles on board. Um, hmm. Obviously, I've spent a lot of my sailing career as a navigator, so I probably do a little bit more of the navigation. And uh, and when I'm doing that, Justin obviously sort of takes care of more of the performance stuff, but obviously we, we, we share the sailing of the boat. And then for the mechanics of the boat, I guess as well, we kind of split things up. Yeah. Justin very care kindly uh, agreed to do all the stuff on the bow, so I kind of do the stuff in the pit. <laughs> right. So uh, how many days do you plan to uh race during that uh, Transat Jacques Vabre, how long is it supposed to be? Um, this year it's, um, it's, a, it's a longer race than, than before because we go all the way down to Fernando de Noronha and then back up to Martinique so uh, mm. the course is 5,800 miles I think and uh, it should take us about 16 days so uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good long race. Okay.